Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew and welcome to our tutorial where I'm going to be sharing with you how to sew with silk or silk-like fabrics. I'm going to be sharing with you methods on how to cut out the fabric, the equipment that's useful to have, sewing on the machine and by hand, and pressing techniques. So whether you're working with a silk fabric or a man-made fabric that is slippy and lightweight and causing you problems, Hopefully there'll be some tips and techniques in this tutorial that will help you. So let's get started. Let's start by looking at some tips for cutting out silk or slippy fabrics. Now the first thing that I tend to do is to take either some tissue paper or some paper and I would position that onto my table. I personally use tissue paper most of the time because it is cheaper, but you're welcome to use big sheets of paper or you're even to welcome to work with fabrics such as calico or something cheap and inexpensive. What you want to do is to lay your paper or your layer of fabric onto your table or the surface that you're going to be cutting out your fabric on. And generally speaking, I tape it down and I generally tape it relatively close to the edge of the table. So that I've got a nice layer of tissue paper. Now, I would always work with white tissue paper, purely because you don't want the color to come off on your beautiful silk, potentially expensive fabric. However, for this tutorial, I wanted to make sure that it was really clear for you to see. So I'm working with a pink. Once you'd stuck your layer of tissue paper or paper onto the table. And obviously you can buy this in big width, so it might be as wide as your table. But if it isn't, please don't worry. You're welcome to buy some sheets and you can stick them together. As long as you've covered the surface of your table with the tissue paper and it's stuck down, then you're good to go. And again, you don't need to tape all the way down the edge. I just tend to put them at intermittent intervals so that it's holding it. Then you're going to take your fabric, whether that be a silk or a lightweight slippy fabric that you're having problems cutting. And you're going to take this and lay it down on top of your tissue paper or paper. You want to match up the selvage edge with the edge of your tissue paper here so that you can make sure that the fabric is sitting straight, just like so. And you would do that on both sides. And this is where I would suggest whenever you're working with a difficult fabric, such as a silk or a slippy fabric, that you cut out everything in one layer. Folding the fabric can make it difficult. It's not impossible, especially if you use the method of having the tissue paper underneath your fabric, but it will be easier to cut out in a single layer. The other thing to think about is make sure that your selvages are nice and neat and that the fabric is sitting flat because obviously your horizontal grain which is here will have been cut in the shop and this may not be straight so if this is sitting unstraight on the table it doesn't matter what matters is that your selvages on both edges are sitting nice and straight in line with the edge of your paper and your fabric is smooth next you're going to get another layer of your tissue paper or paper and you're going to position that on top to create a sandwich. And we're going to match up the edge of this tissue paper with the edge of the fabric and the previous tissue paper. And lay that all together. And because you've got the tissue paper on top, you can stick that down again. So we're simply creating a sandwich. Once you've added the top layer of tissue paper, the selvage of the fabric and the edges of the two layers of tissue paper should line up along the edge. And this is, as I said, normally close to the edge of my table. And again, I reiterate, these would be white, not pink. I'm only using pink so that you can clearly see them. The layers of tissue paper help to keep your fabric flat and they will stop it from moving and shifting and slipping. And you'll get a much neater cut now you've got the fabric sandwiched between the two layers, you can lay on your pattern pieces. And you would lay on your pattern pieces as you normally do with your fabric. You'd position them on, you'd measure from the grain line to the selvage and check that your pattern piece was straight. Then it would be up to you 
whether you wanted to use weights to hold the pattern pieces down or whether you preferred to pin. I personally prefer to use pins and when you're working with pins you will need to choose a silk pin if you're working with a silk fabric or a silk like fabric. You may find that a normal pin has will scag the fabric because it will be thicker than a silk pin. The other thing to point out is that I always pin in the seam allowances so I always pin close to the edge of my fabric. The reason being is that if the pin were to skag the fabric or damage it in any way, they would be in the seam allowance, not in the center of the garment. So you're going to move your way around your pattern piece, pinning it down. Once you've happily pinned your pattern piece onto the layers of tissue paper and silk, you're going to cut it out as you normally would, but you'll be cutting through the layers of tissue paper as you cut through the silk or the silk like fabric and I promise you will get a lovely smooth cut and your fabric won't be slipping anywhere. So let's look at the tools and techniques that you need to follow when marking your silk or silk like fabric. Generally speaking I work with carbon paper and a tracing wheel when I'm marking most of my fabrics. However, this is perfect for a cotton, a linen, or a majority of fabrics, but for silk and silk-like fabrics, this can be problematic. The carbon paper, it may not be easy to remove the markings from your fabric, and also the tracing wheel can easily damage a silk. So I would personally stay clear from these if you're working with a silk or a polyester silk or anything that's lightweight and slippy and potentially could scag. So you need to therefore go back to more of an old-fashioned method of sewing and complete tailor's tacks. You want to get yourself some nice sharp hand sewing needles and they should be fine as well. You don't want anything too thick when you're working with silk. I personally like sharps and I personally like to work with a silk thread. Now this is a Guterman silk thread that you can tell by the blue at the top and bottom of the spool. A silk thread will smoothly glide through the fabric and you'll have no problems with it accidentally catching anything. So whenever I'm working with silk, I tend to pretty much use this for all of my hand sewing. Another thing to point out is that obviously, although we know how we're going to cut out the pattern in the first place, there may be some cutting and trimming that needs to take place throughout the process of creating your garment or product. So invest in some sharp scissors. A sharp little pair of scissors for clipping small things, you don't want to scag any of that fabric. And one thing I would recommend if you're doing any cutting without the layers of tissue paper is to invest in a pair of micro serrated scissors. Now, these have got some very small little serrations on the blade. And what they'll help to do is sort of help grip the fabric slightly as you're cutting it so it won't slip so much through the scissors. Something to really think about if you're working with silk often. So let's look at the tips that you need when you're sewing on the sewing machine with silk or a slippy fabric. The first thing is the press of foot. I would completely recommend going and getting a walking foot if you're working with any difficult fabric. The walking foot has feed dogs on the bottom of the foot here, so we'll be able to pull the fabric through from both the top and obviously the feed dogs on the machine as well. So you've got feed dogs either side of the fabric, which will really help to pull your fabric through the sewing machine. So whenever you're working with a difficult fabric, the go-to foot is the walking foot. And it's probably the main foot that I would recommend adding to the collection of feet that you will have with your sewing machine. The second thing is needle. You need to work with a smaller needle. So generally speaking, the lighter the fabric weight, the smaller the needle that you require. So if you have a look here, these are the Schmetz Universal Needles, which are the standard needles. An 8012 or a 9014 are the sort of standard needle sizes. So if you're working with a lightweight fabric, you need to be moving to a 7511 or even a 6510. So a smaller size for lighter weight fabric. Obviously this is talking about lightweight slippy fabrics, you may have some silks that are a bit difficult to work with that are heavier weight, so obviously then you wouldn't need to change the needle. 
The other thing to think about is that you need to check that your needle is sharp. Often you'll take out a 7511, you'll use it for a while, put it back in and forget that perhaps you've used it lots of times and it might not be as sharp as it and when working with any difficult fabric is test your fabric. Test your fabric with your presser foot, with the needle, with the stitch and the stitch length and width that you're going to be doing and I would recommend actually doing some practice stitches for what you're planning on doing and this will allow you to double check that everything is okay. You should never get any puckers in the fabric around here. Often I have students that will come in with puckers in their fabric around the, not necessarily close to but around here so on the fabric it's somewhere and they'll tell me that their tension is wrong more often than not the tension is not wrong and it's actually that their needle is too big so if you ever get any puckers or pulls that are pulling the the yarn of the fabric back here it's because your needle is too large or perhaps it's just blunt or blunter than it should be for the fabric you're working with the next thing to look at is that generally speaking you'll be completing a straight stitch and generally speaking with lighter weight fabrics you want to have a light, a smaller stitch. So say our standard stitch is 2.5 millimeters. You want to work with about 1.5 to 2 millimeters for a light weight fabric. And actually can you just see there's a little wrinkle ever so slightly there as I'm sewing. That could mean that actually I need to go to a smaller size. I potentially would try a 6510 needle size with this fabric. It doesn't seem too bad now, but there was a little pucker back there. So it is a little bit of just test, 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 test before you begin. Another thing to think about is that often the machine won't like to backstitch the silk and it can really make a mess of lightweight fabrics. So don't use the backstitch. Don't use your fixing stitch on machine, simply go back to sewing and tying or knotting your threads at the start and the end of your sewing. So the next thing you need to consider is the stitch to actually do. Now when you're working with silk or lightweight slippy fabrics, the fabric can often fray a lot. So you need to do a stitch where all of the seam allowances are nicely hidden, especially if you don't have access to an overlocker. And often if you're working with a nice beautiful fabrics such as a silk and overlocked seams can often not do the fabric justice. So you want to be working with French seams predominantly. The other option would be to work with a Hong Kong bound seams or a flat felled seams and but they'll be better for working with heavier weight fabrics. For a lightweight silk like this you want to make sure that you're sewing with a French seam. With regard to hemming I would recommend doing a rolled hem on the sewing machine or a rolled hem by hand. I'll put links to tutorials for all of these stitches in the description box below. Another way to actually help the machine sew your fabric, especially when you start sewing the fabric if you're having problems with it and if you don't have a walking foot, is to use a fabric stabiliser or a piece of tissue paper or paper. And you can put this either side of your fabric, it depends where you're having the problem. Whether you're having a problem on the top of the fabric being fed or on the bottom. Generally speaking, the problem will be on the top, especially if you don't have a walking foot. So what you would do is put a bit of your fabric stabilizer or your tissue paper, and you would use that to help you start sewing. And it will probably, let me go backwards with this. Yes, there we go. And that's just going to help you start sewing. Once you finish, you're simply going to tear this away. And the fabric stabilizers will tear away as do the tissue paper and you should be able to simply tear it away afterwards. You may have to pick out a few of the little bits, but there we go, that's worked pretty well. So tissue paper, fabric stabiliser, a bit of paper would work, but it would be probably slightly more difficult to tear away than the tissue paper was. One thing to add, if you're really having a lot of problem with your machine and potentially the fabric is being pulled in to the hole on your um, machine bed is that you can actually change the the throat plate that you've got here and you can put one that's just got a very small hole in the center of it onto your machine. I personally don't find that I have much use for them but some machines may struggle sewing with the lightweight fabrics and if they're really pulling it in then do try one of those.
Another thing that you can do is actually to change the pressure of the presser foot on your machine and to increase the pressure. Because the fabric is very, very thin, your machine may find that you actually need to increase it so that it can actually feel where the fabric is to be able to pull it through the sewing machine. If you're working with 100% silk, then your fabric can take quite a lot of heat. However, you must be cautious with the steam because silk can be stained by moisture. So just be careful as how much steam you put on things. And obviously this will depend on how good your iron is. I always recommend pressing, whether you're working with silk or any other fabric, I would always recommend pressing your seams after having sewn them. This will help them sit much better. The stitches will meld into the fabric and you'll get an overall more professional finish. One tip that I do have is to use a pressing cloth and I would use this when I'm working with silk or when I'm working with any silk-like fabrics because a silk-like fabric such as a polyester has more of a tendency to potentially melt or go shiny. So I would always recommend using a layer of silk organza as your pressing cloth. The good thing about silk organza is that because it's see-through you can see whether you're accidentally ironing in any pleats or creases and because it's made of silk it can take a lot of heat. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you've learned something new and that you feel able to work with silk or slip silk-like fabrics in the future. Thanks for watching. Music